Greetings and welcome to the Governor's Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Celebration. I'm Kenya Cox, Executive Director of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. And on behalf of our Governor, the Honorable Laura Kelly, and my seven commissioners representing all four congressional districts of Kansas, I greet you on today and thank you for joining us. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Beryl New, the chair of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. On behalf of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, I welcome you to the Kansas Governor's Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. March and Celebration. Our theme this year is Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? We have recently witnessed the effects of chaos, but today we want to reiterate the benefits and blessings of community. Dr. King said, let us be those creative dissenters who will call our beloved nation to a higher destiny, to a new plateau of compassion, to a more noble expression of humanness. These are the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. These are also the life walk of Dr. King. Compassion and humanness through peace, unity, and love. And speaking of a life walk, in past years, we would have joined our governor, Honorable Laura Kelly, the Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General Derek Schmidt, the members of the African American Legislative Caucus, other legislative representatives, local officials, community members, youth, and you for a walk around the Capitol, ending up in the rotunda for the program which you will see today. This year, that is not possible. But we must not let that stop us from maintaining our own strong march toward compassion, humanness, peace, unity, and love. On this day of service, we can yet take a stand and even take a symbolic or an actual walk in solidarity for all that Dr. King embodied. A walk around the Capitol, a walk around our block, a walk around our home. We can take a walk. We can take a stand wherever or however we can. We will be inspired today by our youth and we will be challenged today by our keynote speaker, Kansas's own award-winning author, director, producer, and filmmaker Kevin Wilmot. And hopefully, we especially will be reminded today and every day to show compassion by respecting the humanness that we all share. Hopefully, we will choose to live in peace and unity and display love toward everyone so that we can move as individuals, as a state, and as a nation from chaos to community. So on behalf of the Honorable Governor of the State of Kansas, Governor Laura Kelly, and the Kansas African American Affairs Commissioners, Commissioner Trent Davis of Salina, Commissioner Joseph Elmore of Wichita, Commissioner Anthony Lewis of Lawrence, Commissioner Jonathan McRoy of Wichita, Commissioner Mark McCormick of Kansas City, Commissioner Jonathan Westbrook of Kansas City, and Executive Director Kenya Cox of Wichita, I am Commissioner Burl New of Topeka, Chair of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Welcome to the 2021 Kansas Governor's Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. March and Celebration. 
Where do we go from here? From chaos to community. Good morning. I bring you greetings from the 29th Senate District. I am Senator Oletha Faust-Gudeau, Assistant Minority Leader in the Kansas Senate. Dr. King believed that a person's worth should not be measured by his or her color, culture, or class, but rather by his or her commitment to creating a better life for all, by living a life of service to others. Thank you. Greetings, my name is Patrick Penn, the state representative from House District 85 in Northeast Wichita, as well as the city of Benton over in Butler County. I just wanted to greet you all today on this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday and just thank you for all of the strong action that you're taking to remember his example of service, of team before self. I was in the military for 20 years and that's something that we've always done is service and putting uh, the team above and before ourselves. And that's something that Dr. King lived out his life and even in his death in the service to others. So it's important to me. As a newly elected state representative, um, that's something that I really want to do and bring to the table. So as we remember the words of Dr. King, that one day we will be judged not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Uh, I just wanted to thank you all uh, for the uh, great support that you gave in order to uh, represent you here in this election and also to walk these halls in support and representation of you. I ask for your prayers. I ask for uh, your prayers not only for myself, but our families and the other fellow legislators that we might do the work to make sure that we are all equal, not only before the eyes of God, but before the eyes of the law and the laws here in the state of Kansas. So with that, uh, I commend you uh, for gathering here in honor of the memory of Dr. King, my frat brother for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and just let you know that uh, we love you, we appreciate you, and let's get after it, let's get to work. Good morning to the Honorable Governor Laura Kelly, to all of her cabinet and staff members, to the elected officials of the great state of Kansas, and to the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, and to all Kansans near and far, will you please join me in a word of prayer? Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. You are the grand architect of the universe, and it is you who have made us, and not we ourselves. For we are the sheep of your pasture, and that you have provided for each and every one of us. We come before you today with presence and thanksgiving to your holy name. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all of the blessings in which you have given to each and every one of us. Dear Lord, we acknowledge that we depend and lean upon you. We come this morning asking for your divine direction, for we are living in a chaotic and turbulent time, O oh Lord, and we are touched by the unseen plagues of what we call Corona. Father, that has ravaged the lives of many, and Father, have touched the homes of many and put us in a grieving stage. And Father, not only that, but it has affected our physical condition. And nevertheless, O oh Lord, we know that you are a very present help in a time of trouble. And Father, we are plagued by also the unseen hand of indifference and injustice that is marching across the nation. Father, we need you right now more than ever. And Father, we're praying right now that you would touch our leaders. Oh Lord, guide their thoughts and touch their hearts. Oh Lord, that they might be able to lead your people. Father God, we're asking you also to look down upon this program today and what it stands for, O oh Lord, that we too might be binded close together, O oh Lord, by your love. 
Keep us, O oh Lord, from all hurt, harm, and danger. And keep us, O oh Lord, in the bounds of decency and the concern for our brothers and our sisters. For you have said there is no greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. So, Father, teach us, O oh Lord, how to love one another. For you also said that if we would do this, others would know that we are your disciples. So, Father, we ask right now, touch all of us, that after this program and what we will experience this day, that we can go out from this place and make our communities and our businesses and our churches a better place, O oh Lord, that we may raise our children and fellowship one with the other. We thank you. We submit this prayer to you, and all of God's children said, Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the Hello everyone, greetings on this Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. I am Representative Casey O'Hobbison, Vice Chair of the Kansas African American Legislative Caucus. On behalf of all my colleagues, I would like to welcome you to the Governor's Annual Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration and to thank Governor Laura Kelly for recognizing the work and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King and proclaiming January 18th Martin Luther King Jr. Day in Kansas and urging all citizens to reflect upon Dr. King's message and celebrate diversity as one world and one community, further advancing the principles of justice and equality. Thank you, Governor Kelly. Greetings from Kansas City District 4 in Kansas City on this Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday holiday. I'm Senator David Haley. You know, many people are surprised to learn that Lift Every Voice and Sing was first written as a poem. Created by James Weldon Johnson, it was performed for the first time by 500 school children in celebration of President Lincoln's birthday on February the 12th, 1900 in Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today, Lift Every Voice and Sing is one of the most cherished and recognized songs of the African American Civil Rights Movement and is often referred to as the Black National Anthem. So playing this song with reverence for the past and the continued hope for our future is former Kansas State Representative, the Reverend Roderick Houston.
always wear your mask. I'm Commissioner Mark McCormick. I will be brief, for as they say, blessed are the brief, for they shall be invited back. And I want Kenya to invite me back. But being brief will be difficult in talking about Kevin Wilmot, our keynote for today. Kevin Wilmot is an Academy Award and British Academy of Film and Television Arts award-winning screenwriter and filmmaker who has written and directed numerous films and documentaries. His feature films include Ninth Street, CSA, Confederate States of America, The Only Good Indian, The Battle for Bunker Hill, Destination Planet Negro, that's where he met me, and Jayhawkers. Most recently, he co-wrote the award-winning Black Klansman and The Five Bloods with Spike Lee. He most recently completed the 24th about the Houston riot of 1917. That film had its world premiere last year at the South by Southwest Film Festival. He is a graduate of Kansas's Marymount College and NYU's Tisch School of the Arts. He is a professor in the Film and Media Studies Department at the University of Kansas. He is also a published playwright and works as an activist for peace and civil rights issues. That last point is what makes Kevin so special. His utter sincerity and depth of concern for all things peace and civil rights related. You see all of these values in his work, and there's nothing easy about what he does. If mere writing is thinking on paper, imagine the degree of difficulty involved in filmmaking where you're trying to create images that have to compete with what we see every day along with our imaginations and our aspirations. His work reminds me of one of my favorite poems about Dr. King that reads in part, dead men make such convenient heroes for they cannot rise to challenge the images that we might fashion from their lives. And besides, it's easier to build monuments than to build a better world. Monuments offer us cheap badges of heroism. Kevin asks so much more of us. I see in him and in his work his challenge to audiences to wrestle with big ideas and to think deeply about those ideas, even those ideas that might privately haunt us. He does this always with the intent of inspiring us to contribute to that better world, as well as to our Im imaginations and to our aspirations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kevin Wilmot. Hi, I'm Kevin Wilmot. I want to thank the African American Affairs Commission for inviting me today to be your, your speaker. It's a, quite an honor. Uh, I'm a Kansan, born and raised in Junction City. Uh, I love Kansas. I love the noble narratives, what my, my buddy Mark McCormick calls a noble narrative of Kansas, the free state, John Brown. Um, we've always been at the center of kind of what makes America great in so many ways. Um, Dr. King is, you know, when I was a kid growing up in Junction City, um, I was in fourth grade and was sitting on my floor of, my, of our old house on 10th Street in Junction City, playing with my army men uh, and new, news flash. Dr. King has been assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. My mother jumps up, starts screaming, hollering. She runs out the front door. My father, Mr. Hammond was down at our house at the time and they all went to my mother and tried to calm her down and she was totally out of control. She was weeping. Finally, they got her in the house and they calmed her down and, and I turned to my big brother Lee and I asked him, who's Dr. King? And I was always that current events guy. I was that current events kid that, you know, um, always watched the news, went back to school the next day and talked about what was going on in the news. And I remember going to school the next day and saying that, that uh, you know, Dr. King was killed last night, was assassinated. And my teacher said, we won't be talking about that. And what do you think happens to a kid in fourth grade when their teacher says, we won't be talking about something that is clearly, clearly a big, big, big story? That's all you want to talk about. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened to me. 
uh, when she said we won't be talking about that, I've not really stopped talking about it ever since. And that's, that's what we all should be doing. We all should be talking about it. And the more we talk about it, maybe the more we'll do about it. Dr. King's life is um, the life that we all should try to emulate in one way or another. Um, I wrote a play a while back called Becoming Martin that I, I'm working on turning into a television show now. I hope it happens. And um, there are many things about his life that I think people don't really know much about. Um, uh, when he was a kid, uh, I believe he was about eight years old. Uh, they called him ML. Uh, and uh, his real name was Michael Luther King. It wasn't Martin Luther King. His father went to the um, uh, a trip on the, to the middle to, excuse me to the Middle East, and he um, uh, was really moved by this trip. And and he went to Germany, and he and he saw, I believe, some of the areas that the real Martin Luther had been, the church that he was in, things like that. And he was so inspired, he came back and he, he changed his name and Martin's name to Martin Luther King. Uh, most of his buddies, when he was a kid, you know, they still called him Mike, Michael. Uh, most of the time, they called him ML. And one day, when he was eight years old, ML was supposed to be watching his his uh, little brother AD. And A.D. was sliding down the banister in their home. And, and M.L. was very close to his grandmother, his mother's mother. And they called her Mama. He was very close to her. A.D. was sliding down the banister, slid down the banister, ran into his grandmother, knocked her down. She hit the back of her head and knocked her out. And M.L. and A.D. both thought she was dead. M.L. was so distraught, so upset what he felt responsible for. He was supposed to be watching his little brother's brother ends up, you know, knocking his grandmother down. He thought killing her. He ran upstairs. They had a two-story house. He went upstairs to his room and jumped out of the window to try to kill himself. He was so upset. Obviously, he didn't die. He shook up. He didn't hurt himself. And years later, when he was 13, uh, he was supposed to, uh, you know, he's ML's a kid like everybody else. You know, he's he's a kid. He's supposed to be at home, but there was a parade downtown. He wanted to see this parade. He snuck off, and uh, he uh, watched the parade. And he's at the parade, and his grandmother had a speaking thing at the church, his father's church. And while she's speaking, she has a heart attack, and and it's rushed to the hospital. Emil's at the parade. A neighbor said, "Hey, you know, do you, you know how's your grandmother?" And and he, of course, didn't know anything about it. He ran all the way home. He gets home. Uh, his all his family's there. They're all weeping, crying. His grandmother has died. Again, he runs upstairs, jumps out the window, and tries to kill himself. Again, he was shaken badly but unharmed. And so he tried to kill himself twice before he was before he was 13 years old, really. And um, and it, that metaphor of of suicide and all of those things, it really kits, it really fits the King story because death was always like around the corner with with him. And I think I think the bigger metaphor of that is that. When you fight for justice and truth and and what we believe in in America, what we say we believe in in America, what we, what we hope we believe in in America, what we're fighting for, what we believe for in America, those things, death is always kind of around the corner. And they go hand in hand. You can't, and what I mean by that, you can't have those things without taking great risk. And ML... Dr. King was always willing to take those risks because he believed in it that much. And he believed, he, he loved his grandmother so much, he could not imagine living without her. And that's, that's how we've got to believe in the country. And that's how he felt about the country. He believed in the promise of America. 
you know, I've, I've got a new movie um, called um, The 24th, and uh, over this shoulder, I should say, The 24th, and another movie called The Five Bloods uh, that I wrote with Spike Lee. And both those movies are about black soldiers who believe in the promise of America. And black folks have always had to believe in the promise of America. And we've always got to, even when we know it's not a reality, we've got to believe it's coming, that the promise of America is coming. And we're going to do, we're going to sacrifice, we're going to do the things we need to do today because of what we hope will happen tomorrow. What we hope will happen tomorrow is that we hope that they'll be, they'll give us our rights, that we will experience equality, that we'll see truth and we'll see justice, that we'll see fairness, that people will live a better life. And, and so in the Five Bloods, we show kind of how, you know, black soldiers in Vietnam were fighting for their rights they didn't have at home. And what made it so rough was that they're fighting for their rights they don't have at home, but people back home are fighting for those fighting for those rights. And and that's that's probably one of the toughest situations you could be in. I mean, literally we have a scene in the film where Dr. King is killed and 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 they hear about it through Hanoi Hannah, kind of a Tokyo Rose character, the real character, real person who you know, worked with the Viet Cong to give propaganda. And unfortunately, a lot of the things he was talking about were true. And black soldiers, a lot of them heard about um, the death of assassination of Dr. King through through Hanoi Hannah. And that's what we show in the film. And, and so black soldiers, black people in this country have always been, had this torn, you know, this, this kind of torn loyalty, t torn allegiance. But we've always believed in the promise of America. We've always believed it was going to be better. And and we always were willing to sacrifice for that. We were willing to, the first person to die for America is Crispus Attucks. And he dies at the Boston Massacre. And, and he dies knowing that his fellow blacks are, most of them are still slaves. But he dies fighting for this idea that he, that he thinks a good one and could be, could be a great one. That's been the challenge for not just black folks, really, but for all of us in, in many different ways. But it's really been the big challenge for, for black folks and those of color, Native Americans. You know, we, we know now that because we have progressed a little bit in this country and we know now that the challenges that our trans and gay brothers and sisters have. And that is all part of what Dr. King called his beloved community. He wanted all of us to be part of this global vision, this global kind of, this global idea that was fairness and equality and justice for all. And we can have that. We can have this race, this, you know, democratic racial, multiracial democracy in this country. We can have that beloved community if we're willing to take a risk and we're willing to, to step out and we're willing to fight for what's right and do the unpopular thing. And the unpopular thing in America is probably the big, the big challenge for a lot of folks, especially our political leaders. Obviously we just had a, a horrible terrorist attack on the nation's capital, um, this black policeman and he's literally being chased by, as they said when they were chasing him, there's one of him and there's thousands of us. But he stood up to them and he was able to make them go the other way and probably save the vice president's life. We've got to understand one thing. Black folks can rescue America, but we can't save it. We can't save America. White folks, rich people, people with power, people with political position, they're going to have to step out of their comfort zone and they're going to have to talk to their brothers and sisters and they're going to have to tell them the truth and they're going to, have to tell them to stop believing the big lie and they're going to have to say that we're all Americans and that we all need to work together 
And that if we do that, if we stop seeing each other as a threat, if you stop seeing black people as a threat, if you stop seeing Mexicans, gay people, trans folks, if you stop seeing them as a threat, we can have a multiracial democracy in this country. We can have a beloved community in this country. We can all work together and make this country everything that Dr. King wanted it to be. Thank you so much for listening. Hello, I'm Jessica Noble, Executive Director of the Kansas Volunteer Commission. We are honored to partner with the Kansas African American Affairs Commission to host the Governor's Martin Luther King Jr. Virtual Celebration. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is the only federal holiday designated as a National Day of Service to encourage all Americans to volunteer to improve their communities. Service projects honoring Dr. King's legacy are taking place all over the nation. I'd like to give a special shout out to the MLK Day of Service mini grant recipients, Rosedale Development Association, Four County Mental Health in partnership with Four County RSVP, and the United Way of Douglas County. The mission of the Kansas Volunteer Commission is to empower all Kansans to meet community needs through service. The Kansas Volunteer Commission is a program of the Kansas State Department of Education. We are a small but mighty staff of five, working to initiate collaborations and create opportunities to build resources and strengthen AmeriCorps National Service, youth mentoring, civic engagement, and volunteerism across the state. Our work is driven by our 15 governor-appointed commissioners from all across the state. As a commission, we respect diverse perspectives and experiences and believe that all individuals have the capacity to lead. In that spirit, we have developed a five-part diversity, equity, and inclusion training that will be released in March 2021. This training will empower individuals to learn, reflect, and apply diversity and equity and inclusion practices in both their personal and professional lives in order to increase equity and equality for all Kansans. For more information about the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion series, please visit our website, www.canserve.org, and subscribe to our newsletter. Registration information will be released soon. I'd now like to turn it over to our webinar series presenter, Dr. Bongi Wainika from Ottawa University. I am Dr. Bongi Wenyika from Ottawa, Kansas. I am excited and honored to partner with the Kansas Volunteer Commission and facilitate a five-part webinar series on diversity, equity, and inclusion. As an advocate for diversity, an immigrant from Zimbabwe, a parent of a child with disabilities, and having worked and volunteered in both nonprofit and for-profit organizations. I know and have learned that diversity is a strength. In the five-part series, number one, we will examine the history of immigration as it relates to diversity. In episode two, we will define what diversity, equity, and inclusion means. In episode three, we will examine the dynamics of inequality. In episode four, we will define the challenges and understand those challenges faced by the disability community and challenge ableism. In the fifth and final episode, we will examine the new frontier in diversity, equity, and inclusion. That is, the challenges and issues faced by the LGBTQIA community. I look forward to meeting you and encourage you to sign up for this important and timely webinar series. See you soon. Hello and welcome to our Kansas Capital. 
I am Representative Barbara Ballard, and I'm from Lawrence, Kansas, and I represent the 44th District. Well, this is Dr. Martin Luther King's holiday, and you know he has one of his sayings, it is always right to do what's right, and that's the way I feel. Um, if we're doing the right thing, we know we're doing something to help people and to make a difference. And Dr. Martin Luther King spent his life doing just that. And for that, we honor him and we serve him, and we try to make sure that we do some of the same things that he has done. And it's not always easy, and especially what's going on in the world now with COVID and all of the different kinds of problems that we're having. But nevertheless, we were given life, we have to make the best of it, and we do so by honoring Dr. Martin Luther King and all he's done for us. All think realistically yes, about that day when we will be victimized with what is life's final common denominator. That's something that we call death. We all think about it, and every now and then I think about my own death, and I think about my own funeral, and I don't think of it in a morbid sense. Every now and then I ask myself, what is it that I would want said? And I leave the word to you this morning. If any of you are around, when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. And every now and then I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or four hundred other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that day that I tried to be right on the wall question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to call those who were naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian, or if I can bring salvation to a world once wrought, if I can spread the message as the Master taught, then my living will not be in vain. Yes, Jesus, I want to be on your right or your left side. Not for any selfish reason. I want to be on your right or your left side. Not in terms of some political kingdom or ambition. But I just want to be there in love and in justice and in truth. And in commitment to others so that we can make of this old world a new world.
in our world, but we know that through prayer and through people coming together, we have an opportunity to build community. And so as we go into prayer, we want you to think about what's going on, uh, not only in Kansas, not only in the White House, in our own houses, but we want to think about the opportunity that we all have to be able to bind together in Christian love, the opportunity we all have to be able to come together in prayer and pray to an awesome God who is able to do all things. And so once you bow with me, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had today to be able to focus our minds on you and on the tasks that are ahead for leadership in this country. We pray, God, for those on the national level. We pray for those right here in our own state. We pray for those in our own local communities. 
We pray, God, that we can be communities of, of, of connection and communities of love and communities of good spirit and communities that will come together and work together for a common bond. And so, Lord, as we pray, we need your power. We need your presence. We need your wisdom. We need your guidance. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be a community, not of confusion, not of suppressing and, and, and taking others for granted. Lord, we want to be a community that everybody is important, everybody is valued, everybody has an opportunity to have a voice. So thank you, Lord, for this day. But we're mindful of the days to come, that we'll come together, we'll work together, we'll labor together, we'll love together, our kids will play together. Lord, help us to be a community and help us not be in chaos. Thank you now for the leadership in this state, in this community. We ask you, Lord, to bless us and keep us, that you always smile upon us. Give us strength to be bold. Give us strength to stand. Give us strength to do the work that you've called us to do. And then, Lord, we'll give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Bring them the harmonies Of liberty That our rejoicing rise High as the living let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. They sing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. 